Over the past few years, there have been quite a few different takes on what is considered a hingeless Game Boy Advance SP. They're pretty clean and basically turn the SP into a Game Boy more akin to the original Game Boy shape. This is the Slate, one of the more recent takes on the hingeless design. The Slate is aluminum just like the boxy pixel on Hinge Shell I did a video on a while back. In this video, I'm going to be doing a quick build of the Slate, seeing how it feels, and in the end, comparing it to the boxy build. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so let's check out what this kit comes with. Go ahead and pop it open. Let's see what we got. So it looks like we have the shell here, and then the screen ribbon, the screws we're gonna need, and then of course the screen itself. And as always, some extra stickers. So this is everything that's included. Let's go ahead and take a look at this shell. All right, so at first glance, it has a nice touch to it, a nice anodized look. I think the design of it is a little bit slanted, as you can see. Kind of goes straight here and then bevels down that way. And then this kind of mounts on the back like, fits perfectly like that. One thing about this build is that it only comes with the front face of the shell, so you will have to provide a back of the shell yourself. Today I'm gonna to be going with this third party purple one. I thought purple and green would look pretty good. Just gonna do a little dry fit, and see how it's snapping in. Looks like it's gonna fit pretty well. So of course you will have to provide your own SP motherboard. The shell doesn't come with the motherboard itself. I already have one disassembled and ready to go, so we don't waste any time with this vid. And I've gone ahead and installed some tactile switches for the L and R trigger, because the L and R's on this one were pretty burn out. Let's take a look at the screen really quick. The one thing about this build that's different about the Boxy Pixel build is it has its own specific screen. You can't use original screens or IPS screens that you may already have. This one has its own shape that is similar to the DMG Game Boy shape and it fits perfectly in there. So that looks really cool. I like the shape of it. Very thin. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and I have a IPS screen right here. A standard funny playing IPS screen. Let's go ahead and take a look. See the thickness difference. And I will be doing a size difference comparison at the end of the video. So there, it is a little bit thinner. It's hard to tell. The screen on the left is the slate one. It is a little bit thinner. All right, moving along, let's take a look. Standard ribbon right there. And then this is the little board that you use to wire in the brightness control. The way I understand it is they wired it in basically the same as like a Game Boy Advance IPS screen brightness control would be where you hold select and you can toggle up and down with LNR. It's kind of cool. Uh, I think it's kind of redundant to me personally because there's already a button on the SP for a brightness button, but I don't know. We're gonna see how it feels and what we think about it. All right, so now that we have everything laid out, let's go ahead and start with the screen. So the first thing looks like it's going to be the screen has to attach to this little PCB. Just like that, just like your normal IPS screen, it kind of clicks right in there. There we go. So it doesn't move around. Let's go ahead and solder in these wires really quick. Now you want to be careful, you don't want to put too much heat on these. One spot is right here for the R trigger, right here for the L trigger, and then right here for the select button. All right, so we have the screen installed. Let's go ahead and get our buttons in and then go ahead and lay the board down and see how it's kind of clicking together. So we're gonna need a speaker. All right, as for buttons, I kind of have a bag full of buttons here. Just pick out some random ones. All right, we got our buttons picked out. I just remembered I was supposed to use this insulating film. I never use it on anything else, but for the sake of the video, I will go ahead and humor them by using the insulating foam. So I just have to peel this up. I always picture this is just kind of for funsies, but you know, we like having a good time. So let's go ahead and slide it in there. Look at that, so beautiful. Now we're ready to go. So let's drop these buttons in. All right, so let's go ahead and get the ribbon. All right, so it looks like this part here goes straight into the Game Boy like that. Go ahead and flip that little thing up, slide that in, latch it. And don't forget to also trim down your triggers to make sure that they're flush with the board. Now that those are trimmed up, let's go ahead and lay this thing in, I guess. 
My wires are kind of getting funky on me. But I guess I'm not using the brightness button. I can kind of just shove them all in the center, huh? And we're gonna go ahead and lay this down. Like that. That looks pretty cool. I like that button layout. That turned out pretty neat. Okay, all the buttons feel good. Well, I guess let's just toss a battery in and see if it's working. Okay, awesome. That's a good sign. So let's go ahead and prep our back. And don't forget to add the nut for the battery door. So the little rods that you have to use for the L and R buttons do come specific for this shell. So you can't reuse the ones you already have. You have to use the ones they provide. And I don't know if anyone's tried this build yet with tactile triggers. They're the same size, so they should work. So it looks like this has to go on before this. So lift that up. Let's go slide under. Yeah, there you go. And then two screws at the top. It's going together really well. Everything feels really solid. Sometimes on the boxy pixel ones, the screws, because they don't use all the same size screws, there's like different size screws, uh, you can kind of grab the wrong one and then the thing will start going together weird. This one, all the screws are the same, so that's a definitely a plus. Now let's check these triggers. We get good snapping. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, they sound so satisfying and they look so clean, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing back together. Man, this thing is looking clean. All right, let's pop that in. Nice, look at that. Oh yeah, there's one screw that goes right here. Nice, that's coming down nice. There it goes. Clean. That is clean. And this is a third party shell and I'm having no issues at all. That clicking is amazing. That was a good call. All right, guys, you know, here, let me clean this up. We'll do the big reveal. I know how you guys like this kind of stuff. Where's the edge? Okay, I got an edge, I got an edge. Ready? All right, all right, everyone, shut up, shut up. Ooh, juicy. Let me get a microfiber. Y'all know my fingers are greasy. That thing looks so nice. Let's get a test cartridge going. All right, buttons are clicking extremely well. That the start and select feel like they don't have quite the same distance traveled to press, which actually doesn't bother me at all. All right, let's set that aside. I'm actually gonna go ahead and build a BoxyPixel unhinged Game Boy really quick so that we can compare them size right next to each other. But if you wanna check out a full tutorial of me building one of those, check out this video right here where I go through it step by step. So I got some purple buttons and this really nice gold anodized BoxyPixel shell. So first off, I, what I do like more about the boxy pixel shell is it does come with a back. That really completes the build. This isn't too horrible. I mean, I actually don't mind it at all, but it would be nice if it was a metal back. All right, so here we have them. So as you can see, the slate is quite a bit smaller. Definitely sleeker. So let's go ahead and toss them on a scale and see what they're looking like. So the slate is coming in at 5.5 ounces, only 5.5 ounces. And then the boxy build, 7.4, so two ounces more. So not huge, but definitely a difference there. 
One thing I will say about the Boxy Pixel, which I lean towards liking more, is that it gives you the access to adding in a headphone jack, which I opted out of doing today just for time's sake. But I did go ahead and add the USB-C charging in, which is awesome. You can just throw a board in there, soldering, real easy. Uh, it would have been nice to see that on this one, but I know they wanted to go with a more minimalistic design, which I can totally respect. And you can always add in the USB-C charging by swapping out this port back here, which is definitely an option. But there is no option on this for a headphone jack, which is kind of a bummer. It would have been cool if they could have maybe found some room up here perhaps to uh, put a space for one. But like I said, I know they were already spending a lot on this project and that's why the shells and everything are so expensive as it is. So let's look at how they feel in comparison to each other. I really like the feeling of both of them. Now, of course, this is just kind of my first impression review of how I think the shell feels. I know my opinion would change, you know, if I played on it for a while, which I do plan on doing. But right now, sitting here playing it, it is very comfortable. The sleekness of it definitely makes it easier to carry around than this. This would fit in your pocket, this would not. I mean, you could force this in your pocket, but I mean, come on. The original buttons on this one is a really nice touch. I like that overall. So another thing we should talk about is price. So when you're pricing these out, they are very close in price point to each other. When you're looking at the slate build here, if you use buttons that you already have and a back that you already have, you can't use a screen that you already have, so you will have to buy the screen. The screen comes in at $65, and the shell, which is just the front shell, comes in at $95. So you're looking at about $160, we'll say $170 with shipping to get a slate, and that doesn't include the motherboard. Now when it comes to the boxy build, you could find one of these screens cheaper, or let's say you already have a AGS 101 screen that you could use in this build, because these boxy pixel shells will accept original screens, so we'll take the screen out of the equation. You could end up building the boxy pixel minus the price of whatever you pick up a Game Boy for, for around $100. So if you wanted to do an IPS screen, you're looking at like $160, $170, it's about the same price, but that includes the metal buttons that you have to get. So it's like you have to buy the screen with this one, but you have to buy the buttons with this one. So they kind of almost even, even each other out, they end up being about the same price, but the BoxPixel one comes with a metal back, and you can put the headphone jack in it, and you can put the USB-C in it. Uh, so, you know, to me, those are bonuses. To a lot of people, they don't care about that, and they just want something sleek that they can put together pretty easily and be able to play all their games, which I totally understand. The last thing I wanted to check out is how the brightness control works on the slate. Now, as you can see, the boxy pixel one uses the normal brightness control. Just press the button, changes the brightness, easy and simple, but for some reason on the slate, they decided to opt out of that button and change it to be uh, controlled by holding select and then toggling with L and R, which I think is a pretty neat feature. It makes me wonder though, if maybe if they would have just kept the brightness control button, they could have cut out the cost it was to make that PCB. Maybe it wasn't that much more expensive and they really just wanted it to look like a flat Game Boy, no extra buttons, so they could have more room to do this like cutout because the cutout is quite a bit bigger and deeper on the slate than it is on the boxy pixel. I do love the weight of the slate. I am liking that and the sleekness, the way that they kind of sloped this edge. So when you hold it, it's facing towards you a little bit more. I really like that design, but I do love this block, this block of metal also. It's also very comfortable. My hands are kind of big. So the way that the boxy pixel fills this edge of my hand right here when I hold it does feel really good. It does feel a little less cramped. So I think it's just preference, so yeah. So what do you guys think? I wanna hear from you down below. Let me know, do you like the boxy pixel unhinged shell or do you like the new slate unhinged shell? But that's gonna round out this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about the slate, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. And if you wanna pick up the parts for a slate yourself, I do have a coupon code. It's JBoyMods for 10% off at Retro Game Repair Shop. You can pick up any of their items on their site and it helps support the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave the video a like and subscribe for more videos like this one.